Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am your host, Kevin, and I once again have one of my favorites. I have so many, I can barely choose. One of my favorite guests from 2022 has already come back on. Uh, you might remember Claire Walton from her previous episode. Let me refresh your memory. Claire is a leadership and high performance coach, coaching executive and C-suite leaders and their teams to achieve peak performance. With a track record as an executive director and 25 years of experience coaching C-suite leaders and their teams, she is also the author of the Amazon bestseller, Super Neuro You, which was published back in mid-2021, I believe. Um, thank you for coming back on and chatting with me again. I had, I, re I remember having a blast last time we talked. I went back and like listened to part of our episode. I was like, oh yeah, that was a fun one. So I'm very pleased <laughs> that you're back on. So thank you for coming back on, Claire. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Kevin. And it's lovely to uh, to be in the company of someone with such fantastic energy. I love oh, it. Good. I'm, I am properly caffeinated as it is still, what time is it right now? A little after 9 a.m. in my time zone. I believe we're we're in your, your afternoon, evening time in yours. I, li I like the collisions of catching people at different times of day. I find that it's, I, I find it to be endlessly fascinating. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's it you see I'm on my no caffeine since 12 o'clock you know wind down go into the evening to have the, the nice calm ritual before a lovely night of sleep before starting all again in another what 13 hours from now <laughs> you know what that's actually lovely that's when I cut my caffeine down as well I get to about noon and I'm like all right wrap it up Kevin and I, mean, yeah. I want to make sure that they you know, has the half life to get out of my system. And then I find myself winding down perfectly right in the head, right head space, right heart space in the evening. Um, mm -hmm. But then there's those, those days, there's, there are those days where I'm tempted where I'm like, should I have the extra cup of coffee? And I like, I go, I go and I'm like, yeah, sure. What, what could go wrong? And then I'm hyper in the evening and I don't sleep as well. It's like, it's amazing how, how much your body tells you when you just listen to it. <laughs> oh. Honestly, a hundred percent. And you know, as you said in the intro, you know, I work a lot in terms of peak performance with leaders. So we're not just working on things like you know leadership skills and leadership styles and all those sorts of good things, uh, which we do work on. But fundamental to all of that is, you know, you may well understand and know how and when to apply the right styles, and you might understand and know what the right leadership skills are. But if you're not looking after your high performance basics, then you're diluting your effectiveness in all of those things. And it's not a case of, again, knowing what those high performance basics are. It's about sticking to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, if one of them is about, uh, which it is, and it's always the one I talk about first, having mm -hmm. really good quality and the right mm -hmm. amount of sleep, then you have to stick to the rules that you know will enable that outcome to happen. So, um, so yeah, I, yeah, I'm quite strict and I'm quite strict with myself because, you know, it's no, you know, we're going to talk, I think the conversation today quite a lot about values and, and, you know, one of my values is about integrity or authenticity, it's kind of same sort of thing for me, because for me, it's important for me to have that integrity of doing the same things that I'm sharing with my clients that are going to help them and if I'm not doing them then how much do I really believe these things make a difference mm -hmm. so I always exactly. have that in the back of back of my mind you know if, if I want to um which I do show up with absolute integrity one of my core values or authenticity same sort of thing then um then yeah you know don't don't suggest something to others um that you're not mm -hmm. prepared to do consistently yourself yeah, I find very frequently for the longest time, and I, I, I find that I stumble into these little sort of, they used to be paradoxes kind of things. And now I understand them to be sort of part of a whole where it's I'm, I'm strict with myself so that I may be generous with others, including myself. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm strict about the things that I know that, that, that I know matter so that when the time comes for me to be generous or to really explore the space or relax or move into something or be more of a servant to myself and to others. I have that capacity for that generosity. So it's not it's not strict versus generous or strict versus sloppy. It's strict fueling generosity mm -hmm. of spirit and of action. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, it didn't, it didn't quite make sense in my head at first, but it felt right and the results showed out. And so I just mm -hmm. kept doing it and thinking about it. And eventually I was like, oh, I had some, I had some faulty circ circuitry in my brain where I was like, I wasn't thinking of those things quite right. And when I stuck to it, when I was strict with it, 
the fruits kept showing up, it kept bearing fruit, kept being able to share. It's yeah, it's this, this virtuous cycle, but that's that's <laughs> that I, I could talk about that for for days. Um, <laughs> but you suggested you know, starting, and you've you've kind of already touched on it a little bit, and so I'll just kind of like catapult us the rest of the way in. When I asked you things you wanted to talk about, um, obviously you stuck very very closely to like your core, the core of your coaching practice, the core of who you are and how you how you are. Um, and so you mentioned working with clients on understanding their values um, mm -hmm. and using that understanding as a means of navigating their work and their life um, more authentically and therefore more effectively. And I like the way that you linked that together as a as a process. So let's talk about that a little bit as, as, as it pertains to you personally and in your practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you know, I, I have a bit of a strap line these days, don't we all? And, uh, <laughs> and, and my strap line is... Um, you know, I'm working with people to help them achieve more success for less stress. Mm. And so, again, you, you know, you might think, again, that's a bit of a paradox in there because it's like, oh, the more success we have, the more stressful it is because we have to mm. put more effort in and we have. No, actually, you know, the starting point is to have an intention of more success for less stress. If you have that intention with anything. And I, again, I work a lot with clients on intentionality. So, you know, if, if we start with that intention, we go back to actually some of those peak performance basics that I spoke about, because mm -hmm. they help us to be able to be more successful with less stress. And although I don't call it a peak performance basic, as I'm speaking this out aloud now, Kevin, I'm thinking mm -hmm. I might actually put it in there, because alongside that, <laughs> I work with my clients on understanding their values. Because if we understand what is really important to us, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, when it's really important to it, what is really important to us, um, then we can make decisions on a daily basis that align with that. And as a consequence, we feel less stressed. A lot of our stress um, is um, self-induced <laughs> because we're <comp> <laughs> yes because we're compromising on our values. Right? And again, I, I come to this through um, my education around this, if you like academic education around it, but probably even more importantly, my own personal experience of eventually getting to that realization um, and then working with clients and then seeing them get to that realization mm -hmm. and then how that then flows into them get, getting to this point of, more success, less stress. In fact, I had a client in here this morning for three hours and it was the first session. And um, this is exactly what we worked on. Absolutely, coincidentally, <laughs> this is what we worked on. It, it was in his first first session. So um, yeah. a lot of the time, this is what we might might do in that. Hmm. And um, and it's interesting. One of the things I, again, I coincidentally just thought of today is um, hmm. if I were to list my values, um, I would add a new one in. So I normally talk about my own personal values as being about um, integrity, which I've mentioned, fairness, or it could be, you know, equality and equity. It's kind hmm. of around that subject. Okay. Uh, making a difference. So it's no hmm. surprise that I call my business leaders are mad, short for making a difference, <laughs> um, which again could be around adding value, creating hmm. legacy, having impact. Hmm. Return on investment, so mm. making sure that whatever I'm doing there's a return on investment and actually prioritizing things based on return on investment um, and learning, constantly learning and growing, um, which links to my confidence, okay? Yeah. And then I was thinking, I think there's another one that should be there for all of us, okay. which is valuing our value. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's almost, it's almost like the glue that holds a lot of it together too. It's mm -hmm. like, it's almost like the mortar between the bricks that build the, build the structure because that's like, I, and on what I, my, the first word that went right across the back of my brain, when you said that valuing your value or values was gratitude, which has mm -hmm. been, it's probably because it's been very top. It's been even more top of mind this week for me than usual. Cause it keeps coming up in conversation about how, how much of a connector gratitude is and how much of a fueler 
and an amplifier that gratitude is on in, in ways that I'm I'm really like in ways that I know well from personal experience and seeing it in others and in ways that I'm really just now beginning to understand um, mm-hmm. that 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 and because the way that, that uh, using gratitude, I, I'll use it as a placeholder word for now, because I like the way you said it too, the valuing your values, because um, that goes that has a way of working inward and fueling you and also at the same time radiating outward and having that positive effect on those around you, those who you are, whether by intention or by accident or proximity, you're influencing, impacting in ways that some of which you're aware of and others of which you might not be aware of. Um, But yeah. that gratitude, that valuing of your values, it grounds you in such a way that I feel like it helps your 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 potency as a human being, your ability to influence and affect positively, just radiate both inward and outward. I'm thinking out loud here right now, and I, I'm listening to myself. <laughs> you're starting to sound a little bit like you're you're back in college in the dorm room, but <laughs> uh, but if you think about this, I, I, you know, I get people coming in here, or sometimes I work online, sometimes I'll go and visit them in their location, um, and these are by the very nature, because my target audience is, is C-suite, as you said. So they're, they're, if you like, what we might consider traditionally successful, mm. yeah, as, a, as in, you know, they have the status, they have the job, and they have everything that goes with that, the financial reward, and the lifestyle that goes with the financial rewards. Yeah. However, a lot of those people are coming in here or coming to see me, meeting with me, and what we find is they're not actually valuing themselves enough Hmm. they're not valuing what's really truly important to them enough yeah they are um people pleasers um who are self-sabotaging their achieving more success for less stress because they're people pleasers or they're perfectionists um because they're driven by a feeling of not being good enough when they are clearly good enough so they're not valuing themselves enough and Mm. so on and so forth um you know you'll have clients like today where you know they're they're perhaps not um sufficiently conscious of what's really important to them and as a consequence they're living and working work is a big part of c-suite leaders lives (laughs) um (laughs) as it is of all of us you know they're living and and working in a way that isn't fully aligned to those values Mm. um but not intentionally it's because they've not been conscious of those values and Mm -hmm. and i am one of those people and i know not everyone will agree with me but i'm one of those people that um believes that values change over time Mm. you know we, we we might grow up with some conditioning that creates some values but then as as we, you know, grow up, and I believe we're constantly growing up, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope so. so. <laughs> um, yeah, it, and, if, and if we're really maturing, I think a great thing about, I mean, I'm 54 now, and a great thing about, you know, this, this age and this kind of maturity is um, feeling okay, in fact, feeling good about constantly questioning who am I. Not in a putting myself down, but in... Yeah. Um, you know, who am I now and what version of me do I want to move forward with? So questioning values is a really good thing. And and then that's allowing oneself to be constantly um, aligning ourselves with, with um, roles, companies, activities, colleagues, friends, uh, you know, mm-hmm. pe- people generally um, who, again, align with our values. Um, and then we're, we're living a much more full, fulfilled, um, less stressful life, which enables us, funnily enough, to be able to make more of a difference and and, <laughs> and perform more effectively in all aspects of our life. Exactly, exactly. An analogy flashed uh, flashed through my brain um, again, as usual. Um, I immediately began to think of uh, navigation. You know, in in olden times, where you had you you're consulting your tools to make sure that you're on course. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. that's an analogy that obviously has lots of purposes, but I'm thinking of it when in terms of myself questioning my values and how that rather than being something of a negative or something that erodes me, it's actually something that uplifts me and adds it buoys me forward because it's it's almost like changing the inflection on the end of it. It's like if you, if I'm down, I'm like, what are my values now? 
You see, I'm like, I'm, I'm, that sounds like a negative. I'm just like, oh, what am I going to have to give up now? What's different now that I'm going to have to adapt to? But if I'm just like, what are my values now? It's like, it's possibility. It's opportunity. It's what's around the corner. And that's not to say that it's always going to be easy. This, this is not an easy, hard sort of com conversation, but it is an uplifting one, a, a fueling one, a buoying one. And so, yeah, in my head, I have this, this old school navigator consulting the sextant and the compass and looking at the stars and checking the map and making sure you're just straight on target or if you've drifted a little bit and where you might be headed because maybe where you yeah. might be headed now is something that back when you started wasn't exactly something you had in mind but you never know when you're going to end up in the new world when you were shooting yeah. for when you were shooting for the east indies <laughs> yeah, but, but i like the analogy and i'll tell you the reason why because we are constantly traveling and if mm. we're constantly traveling through life then the context is going to change so I don't know. Let's keep with this analogy. And I'm going to get. I'm. I'm going to screw this up completely. No time. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it together. <laughs> so, so let's say we set off. Because obviously, I'm in the UK. So we set off from uh, a lot of cruises set off from Southampton. So, so we'll okay. we'll we'll set off from Southampton, and we'll be navigating ourselves to uh, the Caribbean. Let's say I'm thinking of this because this is a um, a cruise that my my father is on at the moment. <laughs> so, so we're going now. Um, you know, in the bay or the port in, in Southampton, that, that context um, is going to require different responses. It's going to make us feel different, require different responses. It's definitely going to require different clothing when out on deck um, to when we're kind of like midway um, across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, yes. I think it's the Atlantic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlantic Ocean. Um, it's going to be a completely different context, you know, if in fact we're, if we're the captain of the ship then again, you know, we're going to be doing different things, responding in different ways because it's a different context. We get to the Caribbean and I can't wait for this. I'm going to be in the Caribbean in two weeks' time. Um, oh. Those lovely, warm waters of the crystal <laughs> ocean in oh. the Caribbean. Again, very different weather um, and very different clothing, et cetera. To here. You know, <laughs> so we're, we're journeying through life a little bit like that. And so, for example, um, and again, I'll refer to the, the, the client from this morning because it's a real case study, if you like. Um, you know, in in the first couple of um, decades of adult of adult life, w would have you know wanted that security feeling that we all want that comes mm -hmm. from earning decent money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we earn decent money, we tend to feel more secure. Both literally secure that we're going to have a roof over the head and we can you know provide ourselves with food, etc. But also secure that we have some worth in the world we tend to kind of attach to those sorts of things so i find with clients who are maybe um in their their 20s and to some extent 30s and they still want a lot more security financial security and so on and everything around that because they're having families and so on that need for security that valuing security and therefore valuing things like um money valuing recognition um you know, valuing maybe even hard work because all of those things maybe go together, mm -hmm. that starts to diminish um, often in the mid 40s, definitely 50s, because um, we value those things and they've got us to a point where we, we, we're feeling secure. Um, and we then start to value things that we didn't necessarily value before. Mm -hmm. So then when I'm finding this is this is when, a, you know, this, you know, maybe values start coming out in people that will have been there, but they wouldn't have been high up on the list. They just been still being on the list, but not maybe yeah. high up on the list, which which might be more about, um, you know, enjoying the process of learning for the sake of learning, as opposed to I need to learn something to get a qualification, to get the recognition, to get the promotion, to get the money, to feel secure. <laughs> <laughs> actually they want to learn because they enjoy the process of learning <laughs> mm -hmm. which is one of your core values which is which is why it's which is why it's there it's foundational <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly um and so yeah you do you see people's um, value shift so and i'm sure you know i mean a lot of people that will be listening to this will be coaches and i'm sure they're mm -hmm. working in the, in the values piece but if anybody hasn't worked in that arena at Never mind with other people, but for themselves. Or if, or, or if you haven't questioned your values for a while, <laughs> you know, that yeah. process of just going back to it. And then, you know, part of the homework for today was um, for this client was to go away now through this new lens um, of, of his core values 
that you know I, I, I use the term this time of um, it feels obvious doesn't it because sometimes my clients say that to me and I got in before he was going to say that hmm. and actually on this occasion he said do you know what it wasn't it is now now we've done this I can see mm -hmm. how going about my everyday activities you know the, the the big responsible things I have to do in my work and even the small things that I have to do as a as a husband and a, as a um, father and as a friend and so on I can see looking through the, the, all of those things through the lens of how can I do these things in a way in which I lean in more to each of these values will make me feel more fulfilled so mm. I don't have to attach my sense of fulfillment to a future point in time when I've achieved something yes yes I can feel it now so all those extrinsic longer term rewards that actually are very temporary that you know the, the the positive feelings associated with them are very very temporary um I can feel it every single day in fact every single minute of every single day provided I keep tackling life through this lens of values and it was like whoa hang on a minute this is this is light bulb moment territory mm -hmm. I find that uh, again because of, of course I think I think in analogies but we've the words come up a number of times and and rightfully so um alignment and quite frankly alignment is so, it's so much at the heart of all the things that we talk about quite frankly as coaches um, and in my head, the analogy is always for me, especially when it comes to those those epiphanies, or at least they feel like epiphanies, those oh moments where something that was once very obscure or opaque becomes obvious, plain as day, as the saying goes. And I sometimes think of the way that, like, say you're getting uh, getting glasses or getting a prescription updated, and they're testing the different lenses, and they're moving different lenses in and out of place and testing the focal length and yada, 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 until eventually things literally the vision literally snaps into place and you're like oh oh that's mm -hmm. that's a w that's a tiny 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 w looking up on the wall at the chart with the letters and i was like that's i often think of that where you have all these different lenses in your life through which the light comes in and the vision goes out and as you're moving them around that's just questioning your values and just exploring remaining alive and lively mm -hmm. as you move through your life and examining things you're moving these lenses in and out or you're having help like a coach guide you in the mm -hmm. snapping in and removing of these different lenses or slight adjustments. And then when the, as the work is progressing, things are coming more into focus and there will be that moment where it just, it just snaps into place. And all of a sudden you can see all the leaves on the trees. I'm speaking as a glasses wearer <laughs> myself. Um, <laughs> all too. of a sudden all these details that were there, they were definitely there and you knew they were there, but you couldn't see them in a way that mm -hmm. allowed you to take action. And I feel like that's yeah. that's so much of what happens. Those moments, I'm like almost getting like a contact high off of that epiphany that your client had earlier. Because I'm imagining what he must have been thinking. And I'm like, oh yeah, I love that feeling. That like, oh, it's obvious yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah. before. But, but, but again, I, the one thing I absolutely love about you. I remember this from the last time is is the metaphors. I do love a metaphor because it just brings you know that imagery to life, doesn't it? So you know, you think about that then. You know your your ability to perform at your best right is going to be based on actually being able to see clearly you know <laughs> um and the other thing is i imagine um yeah i mean i've got contact lenses in at the moment but if i didn't have my contact lenses in or my glasses on um and, you know i i'm kind of like i'm literally i'm dangerous um i'm clumsy <laughs> i'm more likely to hurt myself or other people um, it's uncomfortable and more fearful. So you mm -hmm. think about that, you know, if, if we're living life in a way where everything hasn't gone click, 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 click into place in terms of our values, then we are living life and we are leading in terms of, you know, my client base mm -hmm. in a way that feels uncomfortable, which is scary, where we might hurt ourselves, where we might hurt other people, where we're certainly not, you know, maximizing our potential to perform and then that has a huge ripple effect on the people again in my client base the people that we lead you mm -hmm. know um that has a huge ripple effect when we go back to our families and how mm -hmm. we show up with our families um so and it's interesting it's interesting because I, I have a lot of clients that will say to me in our chemistry calls um Oh, you sound more like a life coach than an executive coach or leadership coach. Hmm. And I say, okay, well, are you dead when you're at work? 
I think it's fascinating. You know, it it's is, like it is. how how can I or anybody effectively coach someone in a leadership role to be a more effective leader if we're not helping them be a more effective human being first and foremost. You know? Well, I want to keep this conversation going so badly. I just looked up at the clock and we've been chatting for 30 minutes already. And I promised to get you out of here quick. I'm that, that was a great, like the way you've just, that was a perfect place to end it. And so I was like, if I don't, if I don't snip it off now, we're going to be here for another half hour at least. So man, I, you know what? Even better than I remember talking with you. This is an absolute delight. I'm I'm going to bother you again later this year. If you don't, I'm just, I'm just going to bother you to come back on because I love where our conversations go and how both head in the clouds, feet on the ground they are because everything's grounded. It's, 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 it perfectly exemplifies you and your coaching, um, at least in my, my two conversations with you. You are always grounded in your values and your structure, and it allows you to reach far and wide and see things from, from a perspective that is just, I, I find to be tremendously deepening to my own understanding. So I guess that's just a long way of saying thank you once again <laughs> for talking with me today. I had, I had a really, really good time. And yeah, I've got some some things to think on and feel on. So thank you. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. And thanks for the metaphors. I'm going to steal them with pride. <laughs> please, please take them, spread them far and wide, break them into little pieces. <laughs> like every metaphor does when you take it too far. It's one of my favorite things. Um, oh, real quick, before I let you go, I mean, everybody knows I'll have all the links in the show notes to how to find you. But let the listeners know like where to best find out more about you and your work and also where they might best find out more about becoming one of your clients, where they can connect with you and start the conversation themselves. Yeah, sure. So uh, two core places, really. My website, um, which is www.leadersarmad.co.uk. I am based in the UK, but I do have international clients too. Um, and um, LinkedIn as well. I've got, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So um, Claire Walton, change agent, you will find me on LinkedIn. Excellent, excellent. Um, so now you're two episodes in, audience, you know what Claire's all about. It, trust me, <laughs> you, would, you would love to be gently but firmly challenged by Claire Walton. I can, I, can speak from experience. I can speak from experience. It's an absolute delight and you will go places and see things differently. So thank you, Claire, once more. Thank you, audience, for listening. And we will get to talk to you again here very soon.